Uh, thank you very much, John Choi, for taking the time out to speak with us. So you've just concluded your talk um, on stage at day two of Summit Seoul. Could you tell us a little bit more about what you spoke about? Yeah, I talked about uh, blockchain being Korea's opportunity to lead in a global uh, scale. Okay, very cool. And um, there was a specific slide on that you brought, what can Korea do for the blockchain industry? And you mentioned a few things. Could you elaborate a little bit more on that? Absolutely. I think two of the advantages Korea has right now is high consumer awareness and also a tight feedback loop with regulatory bodies. So using those, I think Korea can take a lead in having open gaming asset standards. I think the conglomerates can work together to work on uh, taking over a vertical for all of Asia. Uh, I think that a lot of jobs in the blockchain space can come to Korea around engineering, design, technical documentation. So I think there's a lot Korea can do. Yeah, I mean, we, we did our conference in Korea because of that reason, and you've actually been a part of it for two days now. How do you feel about the vibe and uh, the people, the, the crowd that's present? And yeah, could you comment on that? Yeah, no, there's definitely a lot of energy here. For me, I'm a little bit biased. I usually spend a lot of my time on Ethereum events. Uh, but here it was great to see the broader crypto community, broader blockchain community, and see how that's going to be uh, applied outside of just crypto into you know, main world industries. Very cool. So I can expect to see you again at one of these conferences then. Yeah, I'll be around. Yeah. Awesome. So let's pivot into a little bit more about Ethereum and your work with them. So how strong do you feel your position is, as the Ethereum Foundation is considering where you guys are today in the industry? Um, maybe could you clarify a little uh, bit? So what I mean is, um, the Ethereum Foundation, how Ethereum is the second biggest cryptocurrency in the, wor uh, in the world right now and in the space. How strong do you feel your position is going into the future as the Ethereum Foundation? Uh, I see. So we don't really think about like market cap too much. And I know we say that a lot, but I really mean it. Like we really focus on what the technology is being built today and what that enables in terms of use cases. So I don't really think about when are we going to be number one or something like that. But in terms of how I feel about Ethereum, I feel that it's very strong. Um, mostly because the, the strength of the community is, is so palpable, right? The community is always working together on having developer standards and resources that everyone can share. It's not really a competition, it's a group of developers working together to build this technology, and I think that's really amazing. And the, the true like decentralized and international nature of it is amazing. I go to Seoul, Berlin, San Francisco, New York, uh, Bangkok, and there's a strong contingent every, every city that we go to, so I think that's been really incredible to see. Okay, so the community is a big aspect. The community is everything. I agree. I definitely agree. Our community is uh, what makes it strong as well, so definitely can relate to that. So uh, recently, uh, the SEC uh, declared that Ethereum is not a security. What is your opinion about that, if, or, or if you have an opinion about that? Yeah, no, I, I think that's a really good question because we didn't, I, I personally didn't have a good understanding of what the ruling is going to be. And I think roughly what the SEC said was there was a point at which Ethereum was security, uh, but at the current state of, of its decentralized nature and the way that it's being used for utility is not a security. Uh, I think that that is a boon for the industry because you can, all, you can build on top of Ethereum without worrying about regulatory risk. But they, the SEC also did say a lot of ICOs, or, or most ICOs, are securities. So I think it's really important for the space to not just push that issue away, but proactively work with regulators to see what the middle ground is in terms of having innovation that's also protecting consumers. Okay, very interesting. Very interesting. And uh, another question, Casper. Uh, well, how's that progress going on Casper? And could you just update our audience about what's going on with that? Yeah, sure. So Casper is our proof of stake consensus algorithm. And that's being worked on by Vitalik, Danny Ryan, uh, Carl Flores, Chu Cheng, uh, across uh, a couple of different cities. So the biggest change that happened is it was going to be a two-phase transition from a hybrid proof of work, proof of stake, to proof of stake, uh, pure, pure POS. And recently they changed that to merge the pure proof of stake and sharding in the same work stream. So the good part is that the first step is going to be really going to the, for the uh, full vision. But the bad part is it's going to take a longer time because of that. So uh, I don't work on that research specifically nowadays, but I think that's kind of what's going on. Okay, and could you comment on when we can expect it to be fully complete? I'm actually not sure. Okay, yeah. okay. And uh, my last question for you today, um, I, I believe it's a, a little bit of a unique question and I'd like to get everyone's opinion on this. Sure. 10 years from now, yes. what will we remember this era of blockchain as? In the blockchain industry? Yeah, no, I think it's pretty simple. I think we'll remember it as like a speculative mania. I think that 
Uh, if you look at a lot of technological adoption cycles, there's always a point, at, point in time where the expectations are very high, and the technology is being developed, but not almost as fast as the expectations that are growing. So I think what will happen is the innovation will continue to grow at a steady pace, but the, ex the expectations around that just kind of uh, go up and down very sharply. So we might even go into a bear market pretty soon, but over a long period of time, I think the features, if they are real, they'll really shine over a long time. So even more of a bear market than we are right now? I don't know, I don't really predict the market, <laughs> but I think that's possible too, yeah. yeah. Fair enough, fair enough. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much for having me.